Welcome to Manowaker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast. I'm CB Drogi. A quick note before we begin. Flash Fiction Podcast is supported by Manowaker Studios patrons on Patreon. Patrons of Manowaker Studio all get access to free weekly stories and other content in the patron feed, and supporting at a higher tier includes a subscription to Manowaker Books. To find out more, or to become a patron, visit patreon.com slash manawaker. This week, Mouses, by Chip Hauser. A small man stood on the Mitchell's front porch, holding a big yellow box. He said, You have problem with the mouses? Sorry, Mitch said. Behind him, arms crossed, Carol eyed the old school bus the man had just parked out front. The man repeated slowly, You have problem with the mouses? His voice was high-pitched, the accent German or Polish. Mouses? Carol said. Ah, sorry, Mitch said. You must be the exterminator. Alex Herman, he said, tipping forward in a stiff bow. Pleasing to meet you. Mitch held the door open. Come on in. Thank you very much, please, Herman said. Mitch rolled Teddy's pedal cars into the living room so Herman could set the box down. So how does this work, Mr. Herman? Carol said, glancing from him to the box and back. Her words were hard-edged chirps. Please, the mice, Carol said. How do you catch them? I am looking at the house and seeing what we are doing. Don't you just set traps? Carol said. The traps are not safe for the children. You have, yes? Teddy, Mitch said. He turned seven this month. He is a lucky boy, yes? While they toured the house, Herman's hands and lips and eyes moved constantly. Thin fingers danced spider-like across his bushy mustache, through his wavy black hair. He peered deep in drawers and cabinets, hunched into closets and slid behind dressers. He skipped across the rafters in the attic, swept his hands under beds while looking at the ceiling, poked in the dark corners of the basement. The Mitchells followed, exchanging silent frowns and raised eyebrows. Back in the foyer, Herman drummed his fingers across the top of the bright yellow box. The box will work. Uh, great, Mitch said. Carol asked, How? I am showing you. Herman bowed and took his box to the kitchen. Carol clutched Mitch's forearm and whispered, I'm not so sure this is a good idea. It is if he gets rid of the mice. You mean the mouses? Come on, Carol. He was a Super Service Award winner last year on Angie's list. He better be, parking that piece of junk out front. Herman sat cross-legged on his box in the middle of the kitchen. How does it work? Carol asked again. I am opening this, Herman said, leaning over to lift a hatch low on the box's side. From a pocket, he drew a thin pamphlet. And I am reading this. The Mitchells waited as he began reading aloud. Pleasing to go, Herman said, glancing up. I must be concentrating. The Mitchells retreated to the living room couch. So weird, Carol said. They'd better be gone before the party. Carol, we need to talk about that. About what? In the pause, Herman's voice came through low and rhythmic like a chant. Money's tight, hon, you know that. I haven't closed a loan in weeks. What are you saying? I'm saying, how will we pay for it? Carol said, charge it. We've been charging a lot lately. For God's sake, Mitch, do you want to tell Teddy we can't afford a birthday party? They were still arguing when they noticed Herman standing in the doorway, holding his big yellow box. They heard the scrabbling of many little feet. I have the mouses. Oh, gross, said Carol. She tapped Mitch's arm. Get the door. As Herman slid the box in the back of the bus, Carol said, That was so creepy. He was just standing there, leering at us. What did he do? No idea. Whatever he did, I hope it worked. Is he done? I don't know, Mitch said. His box sounded full. What if there are more? Then I'm sure he'll come back. 
A few minutes later, Herman presented his bill with a bow and a flourish. Carol rolled her eyes. The bill was handwritten in a thin script. The sevens looked like little backwards Fs. What are you charging us for? Carol asked. Her arms were crossed again. Herman looked surprised. I take the mouses away. Mice, she snapped. How do we know you caught them all? The mouses love the box. It's... You did a great job, Mitch said, holding out a credit card. I am only taking the cash. Carol looked at Herman. Who doesn't take credit? I'll write you a check, Mitch said. He made it out for $85, 75 for the service plus a $10 tip. Most generous, Mr. Mitchell. Herman bowed again. Pleasing to call if the mouses come back. Herman smiled and held out his hand. Mitch reached out and laughed when a business card slowly extended from beneath Herman's outstretched fingers. Mitch said, How'd you do that? Arms crossed, Carol said nothing. Magic, Herman replied, like the mouses. Printed on the card in large black copper plate was Herman the Magnificent, and below it in smaller letters, Magician. Pleasing to help with the party, he said, with a more elaborate bow, left leg forward, right arm sweeping in front of him, his hand scooping the air. Uh, thanks, Mitchell said, holding out the card, but we really can't afford it. Herman wagged his finger. This I do for nothing. Two mice-free weeks later, on a cloudless Saturday afternoon, a throng of laughing children swarmed around Herman in the Mitchell's backyard. Several dozen parents crowded the deck, drinking and chatting. The talk was money, mostly mortgages, car loans, health care, 401ks, college funds. While Mitchell manned the grill, Carol was everywhere, dropping in and out of conversations, distributing drinks and quips, the perfect hostess. She didn't mention the magician was also their exterminator or thank her friend Melissa for the recommendation. Everyone was having mouse problems, but no one wanted to talk about it. Herman waded among the children in a black coat and top hat, his bushy mustache tamed with wax, coiling at the tips. He produced baubles with effortless grace, a sweating Pepsi from his empty top hat, a coin from behind a well-scrubbed ear, a bracelet from thin air before the amazed eyes of a freckled little girl. Herman made sure each child received a small gift, then mesmerized them with further sleights of hand. Magic knots, melting ropes, even the old severed finger routine. This last caused Teddy, the birthday boy, to catch his breath, eyes widening, nearly erupting into tears before Herman distracted him with a well-placed licorice plug. When he made the stainless steel grill vanish, smoke and all, the children looked at each other gap-mouthed. Mitchell kept thrusting and flipping with his spatula until the grill reappeared. None of the adults noticed, nor did they see Herman transform the garden hose into a writhing green mamba, or the glint in his eye as the children sank back in horror. But when the snake coiled back into a hose, the children laughed and clapped. The parents remained oblivious, even when Herman briefly turned them all into brightly plumed birds, all beady-eyed and cawing. The children's gasped, turned not a single beak. Now for something beautiful, Herman said. He pulled a stack of multicolored papers from his cloak and waved it in the air, fanned himself with them. He pressed them between his palms, hands together as if in prayer. He placed his lips against his thumbs and blew. With each breath, a paper flower, soft blue or pink or green, popped and crinkled up from between his palms. Dozens of little hands reached for the spray of pastel blooms. Herman leapt onto the deck and pressed the bouquet into Carol's hands. She glanced down, smiling vaguely. Their check nestled in the center, shaped like a soft blue tulip, the stamped words, insufficient funds, snaking across the petals. Herman hopped back onto the lawn, landing easily among the children, holding a pamphlet. He waded among them, reading softly, his free palm brushing over them like wind across pendulous wheat. The children moved their lips. They groped for him, hollow-eyed but smiling. They followed Herman down the street in single file, holding hands. 
a long curving tail swishing to the rhythm of his voice. At Carol's request, he had parked at the end of the block. One after the next, Herman lifted the children into the back of his old yellow bus. This has been Mouses, written by Chip Hauser, and first appearing in Spark, a creative anthology, volume four. The Flash Fiction theme song is by Kevin McLeod. I'm C.B. Drogi. Thanks for listening. Episode 0132, Production Copyright 2016, C.B. Drogi and Manowaker Studio.